Okay, so welcome to the Fedora 36 release party. Uh, I'm Martin Coleman from the Anaconda installer team. So what is Anaconda? Anaconda is the, the installer uh, that most people will get uh, to use at least once when they are using Fedora or, or RHEL or some of the related distros. And that's what we are working with uh, in our team. And what I want to talk about today is the uh, a new project related to the to the Anaconda, and basically, uh, it's about a web UI for the installer. So, why we are building a web UI for installer? Uh, basically, the installer. Uh, one of the ways that user can interact with the installer is a graphical user interface. Uh, the current interface at this point is about nine to eight years old and it's built on GTK and uh, Python code. Uh, and we are seeing an accumulating amount of uh, issues with this interface. Uh, one of them is, for example, uh, various uh, UX problems that uh, kind of come out from how the layout works, how the underlying technologies uh, represent this user interface, and are not really easy to, to fix without major changes. Uh, also, for those who have uh, some lower level experience with uh, the graphical stack in Linux distros, we are not yet Wayland compatible, unfortunately. And it also kind of goes down to the technologies used for the current graphical user interface. Uh, and also, uh, this is GTK3, what we are using. Um, some of you have, might have noticed that this is not the latest GTK. There is now GTK4. and over time, we would have to touch this interface on lower level as well, because it would be most likely necessary in the next few years to also migrate to the newer GTK version, like we like we did for the, for example in the past, like uh, the previous graphical user interface for Anaconda was on GTK2. Uh, one quite a big pain point at the moment is that remote access to the installation, which is for example pretty useful for popular. Mm, Single, uh, single board computers like Raspberry Pis and similar uh, is pretty inefficient and uh, not really secure due to the way how it basically scraps pixels from local rendering and sends them over network. So that's something that we would like to fix as well in, uh, in the future of the graphic interface for the Anaconda installer. Uh, from the developer point of view, uh, we don't really have good uh, unit test coverage for the current uh, Current, the PY, uh, current graphical interface. Again, it kind of goes to the to the stack we are using. As far as I know, that there is no like uh, major built-in tooling for for GTK Python interfaces. There are various ways how to you can do it, but they are not that easy. So while we have uh, quite good coverage for the our backend and other parts of the installer. Uh, we are kind of flying blind when we are make, making major changes in the interface, even though there are like downstream tests for Fedora or the RHEL installer. Um, for day-to-day -day development, we don't yet really have a coverage for the interface and doesn't seem to be very easy to do that, do that now. Uh, another way is, another thing that we are noticing is uh, not that, it's already, I think, visible in Fedora as well with for example, cockpit. Mm. As far as I can tell, it seems to be pretty popular, and it basically replaced all the small GTK applications that people use to, sex, uh, to configure their firewalls, their uh, Samba shares, and stuff like that. It's all basically uh, plugins in the cockpit web console, and uh, it, in the RHEL space, it's even even bigger, uh, mm, even bigger uh, change where al almost all of these like. Uh, bigger software projects have web interfaces these days. So, okay, let's go next. So what, what we are, how, how we are going to fix this and improve the situation. So uh, the idea is that uh, when we are going to change it, we might as well do it properly and try to fix as many of these issues as possible with a clean sheet design of the user interface, not just uh, using the same tech stack, but trying to pick a bit better one, as well as fixing the design issues. Uh, 
for, for this, for example, uh, for example, uh, for the design itself, we are starting with uh, a UX designer that's working as part of our team from the day one. We are mm, not just blindly implementing some ideas. We are we have uh, sets of mockups that go through different uh, iterations that are uh, based on best practices of current UX development. And then we are turning those into, into the new, new UI for the Anaconda. We also want this to be Valent compatible from the start, so uh, we are not st starting basically with technological debt from, from the start of this, this effort. Also, we want to pick a graphical interface tech that would be future-proof and that would have a big user community. So it's not, sometimes it looks like we are like one of the Mm. The last big like uh, GTK Python applications in major usage in Fedora. It seems like that most of the other stuff is apparently using other other technologies, and it was not always easy to uh, to figure out like some weird regressions in GTK over the years. Uh, other, uh, the other improvement we want to achieve is make the easy access make easy access to the Anaconda remotely basically a first class citizen to make it secure, to make it efficient, and possibly also to avoid the need to render the UI locally and then send it over the network. That, that results in big installation images because they need to, to include the graphical stack. It requires a lot of network traffic, and it would be ideal to basically move this to the client so you can then easily control the installation of your Raspberry Pi without the system being text by rendering the interface and inefficiently sending it over the network. It, it should just handle the installation itself. And ideally we want to pick something up that users are already familiar with, with the UX principles of this system. So when they enter the installer UI, they are not, not confused basically. Mm, that was actually one of the ideas for the current, current interface and it kind of looks like GNOME Shell from 2009 or something like that. But unfortunately, like, that their design language kind of changed, but ours didn't. So it, it looks kind of weird at the moment. And it's not that familiar to users in the concepts that have, that remain to be used there. So we would like to um, keep in touch with some, some, something that people regularly use in other cases. So uh, what we decided to use for this effort is uh, web technologies, basically. More, uh, to be more exact, it's, uh, uh, it's Cockpit and it's Buttonfly. So, as I've mentioned already, Cockpit, as most people know it, is a web console for mainly Fedora and, and Rail systems, but I know that it supports much more than these two distributions. And it's not basically just the interface itself, it's also a technology that makes it possible for a web application to interact with the system and control it. It exposes uh, the bus interfaces and uh, file system access. So the web interface can easily display log files, uh, communicate with the bus daemons, and even present a shell interface via web browser. Let's also work on some even more advanced stuff like uh, virtual machine access and control. So what we are using is uh, a cockpit for exposing the backend of Anaconda which is a set of processes that provide a debug interface. And then we use a web UI based on Buttonfly. Buttonfly is uh, effectively as a set of uh, um, web components and widgets, as well as some design language, uh, web uh, UX designer toolkits, and gui UX design guidelines that make it possible to do, uh, I would say, pretty nice web interfaces that not only are accessible, but also can handle various screen sizes, mobile use cases. And Butterfly is also the stuff that you actually see when you are using Cockpit and also some of the um, uh, enterprise software suites running on rail like uh, Satellite and uh, OpenShift. It, this is all using the Butterfly components. So people are using Cockpit and these, these software suites should be in general familiar how these components look like. It's just like we present them in, in the use installer, installer use case. Mm. Uh, so how this actually like solves the issue? So 
the familiarity should be solved by people being used to these interfaces from, from other projects. The, the remote access problem is solved by basically providing a web interface. So on the image, install image itself, you basically need just a web server and the Anaconda backend, and the interface is rendered and presented to the user locally. So it enables very uh, limited hardware to have a nice graphical interface because it doesn't need to render it anymore. It makes it also possible to create very small installation images because you don't need to drag like X and uh, geographical toolkit and all the rendering machinery with it. And also unlike the current solution, which is basically VNC shipping the pixels of the GTK interface over network, this is actually properly, this can be properly secured using gen normal HTTPS, unless, unlike the VNC, which is not encrypted and the authentication is very, not very strong. Mm. Okay, uh, and of course, like the, the idea is that this will be not just a remote web interface. This will be also something that uh, will be running locally like, uh, as, uh, as usual as um, what the users are used to at the moment. And this is just a web view running, uh, running at a full, as a, a full screen application which is easily well and compatible. So I've already talked a bit about this. So how does the, how does the uh, implementation of this Anaconda web UI looks like? Uh, the backend is still the same. Already the GTK3 interface as well as uh, the text interface, which will stay the same even, even with the web UI, it's all communicating with the Anaconda backend via Dbus. Uh, so this does not, doesn't really change, and the web interface will be just another interface, at least initially in parallel with the GTK1, that communicates with the backend and controls the, controls the installation. Mm. Mainly we, we will communicate via, uh, via the bus with the backend, but we are actually using also the feature of, of the cockpit tooling to enable access to files on the system. So this, this is what will be used to display log files in the web interface. And also we are already using it to work with the Anaconda config files. There was actually a talk a uh, couple, uh, couple hours earlier about Anaconda config files, and we are using this cockpit bridge to grab the config file, then we parse it in the web UI and work with the values from it. Uh, so I've already mentioned cockpit, I've already mentioned buttonfly. I also need to, uh, to mention uh, React.js, which is what buttonfly is based on. It's a reactive modern JavaScript framework, and that's, that's basically what the logic of the web UI itself is, is implemented in. And these three things is effectively what, that, that's the web UI. It's, it's cockpit for communication with the system, it's pattern fly for the components, and then in the middle basically is the, the React.js to provide the um, client-side logic basically in the web interface itself. Mm. What we, when, we, when we started this project, we decided to build something that would be useful and can be used, tested, and that we got, can get feedback for in realistic circumstances. So we decided to do a minimum viable product for this, and we based it on the, on the Fedora workstation use case. Basically, when we put uh, aside all the like, screenshots of the Anaconda hub from different um, Anaconda installed images, on the Fedora workstation, there are the least screens, because uh, Fedora workstation prefers to prefers to do a lot of the configuration after reboot to the target system. So we decided to use this as the, as the first thing that we want to uh, control via the web UI. And basically, at the moment, it's very simple, but already provides a lot of the fun similar functionality as the Federal Workstation. Uh, the, uh, one, one thing you might notice if you know the current Anaconda design, we switched to a wizard model. We no longer have the hub and spoke model with screens that you go back and forth between, but we have an ordered collection of screens with the option to go back at any time. So this is the first screen that users will see when you select the language. The next screen is very simple storage configuration screen. 
for the minimum viable product uh, version, we just make it possible to select which, which disks will be used, and then they will be automatically partitioned, including removing any data. So please, if you want to try this out, eventually when we do some test days, take this into account. It, it will kill all your data, and that's, the, that's on purpose. So please be, be, be sure. And uh, I think we, we already write it somewhere, so we are fine. The next screen is a, a review screen. And the last one is a progress screen. So to get quickly around it, it's even, in, even when we add more stuff, we kind of want to keep the general structure. So like, most likely we will always start with uh, selecting the language. The, the, the storage configuration will definitely be, be more advanced. And we will then present some summary of what the user has selected before we commit to like, uh, unrevertible changes to the system. But there will be definitely based on the based on the target system more or less screens, different sets of screens, and as before, this will need to be dynamic. Uh, so this is like really the beginnings of this of this effort. And even though this will produce a semi-working system already, that it will we have bootable images, we have tested the interface locally and remotely. It's really, really early still. So the next steps for this effort are uh, we will do some sort of a test day, most likely during the fall time frame. So if you are following the general um, Fedora channels, like the, general, the community blog or the Fedora Devel list and others, most likely you will, you will see it when we are so far. There will be some sort of uh, an invite. If you, if you are interested, you can definitely take part. And after the, after the MVP, we most likely will be uh, will be concentrating on on storage and storage improvements because that's, this is this always has been the most complex and most required for real life installer use cases part of the part of the anaconda and definitely also other skins even though for example federal workstation handles user creation after installation other other projects not uh, they they need that. So we will definitely work on uh, user creation screens it's for configuration. And we are even thinking about possibly using some screens or widgets from cockpit project itself, possibly, because this, the functionality is very similar. So that's something that we will need to investigate if, if we would be able to share the effort with, with cockpit or if it's not really possible for the installation environment being too, too different. Also, the payload we are using at the moment is basically a tarball that is unpacked to the target system for the MVP. We definitely need to support the, uh, DNF, uh, so package-based payloads and other, other payloads that people need for real-world use cases. And of course, Anaconda add-ons. That has been something introduced years, years ago with this then new UI. And we definitely need to keep this working. Already there is an OSCAP add-on, there is Skydump add-on and possibly others for specific user use cases. And that's it. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, I think we are basically like the last talk and we, ha we should have some minutes for that. So please fire away and we should be able to respond. Sure, go ahead. Am I audible? Great, so how do you handle the uh, remote installation actually? What? Uh, how do you handle the remote uh, installation? Because you don't configure any network, so how do you figure out where the Anaconda UI is running? Yeah, so at the moment, basically, uh, the, the machine should get, uh, basically we are using DHCP, so that's one mm. way how you can, can do it. You can make sure, like the you can see from the HTTP server what address this, this the machine got, or you can make sure it, it gets this address. Especially if you are like provisioning some VMs, that's quite easy to do. And other than that, yeah, this this, this is something we are still looking into. It's actually like the, the address is is one problem. The other one is that is how to secure this, because uh, we have the encryption. We can like generate some certificates and cause these cert nice certificate warnings for users. But how do we actually like tell this is the user who started the installation? So we will need to, 
some way how to like embed some secret in either into the images or the way they are started. So then the, key, the people can then securely connect to these to these machines. Like one of the one one idea has been like uh, there is um, quite a lot of uh, interesting projects based on image builder. So possibly you could like generate an image with a secret for yourself that might even like call some service and tell you, hi, I'm alive and I'm running there. Please connect and tell me what to do. Other than that, there is a possibility to inject and configure even the networking, uh, inject the secret and configure networking via kickstart, which could be passed like via Pixie or again embedded in the image. So basically it's the same what we had to handle before. Like if you wanted to remotely control the installation already, you had to get the address somehow either like from graphical console of the machine, which might not always be possible, or uh, you had to like pre-configure the networking via Kickstarter or something. But like the difference should be like now it should be actually actually working, not, not really an efficient, uh, unsecure variance as before. Also like as I've mentioned, the, these SBCs, like these like uh, small, cheap arm boards, I think in this case, uh, you can easily make it like, uh, you can connect to it over like network, USB networking, and it will always get the same IP address and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Should, should I, yeah, okay. So I know from other information channels that uh, your intention is not to have 100% feature parity with the uh, old uh, GUI. So is there any, is somewhere represented what you are going to drop? So this is again like something we, we are still investigating because we are sure like the IT is not like static thing. So I'm sure that something we added like nine or 17 or 20 years ago and we are still carrying it over might not no longer like exist, like maybe some of these like really fancy storage technologies over network with special network adapters and cables might actually not exist in reality anymore. So this is something that we will, we want to investigate and check like if, especially for the example, the advanced storage technologies. This, we have a lot of support for those and we really want to basically do, a, uh, to check actually if these are actually even something that's, for example, supported by Fedora and Trail anymore on driver level if we are not carrying super complex UIs for something that actually can no longer work with modern kernels, for example. So this is something we want to check. We want to definitely reach to users and to find out like what's the highest priority for them and possibly even like move some, some stuff to, to add-ons or possibly Again, like we are investigating if we could possibly uh, provide some parts of the functionality via cockpit plugins, existing cockpit plugins. So that could be also something that could be shared with some, some other, some other uh, projects. But yeah, definitely we, need to, we want to check what's actually used by people. We don't really have any like uh, usable metrics and I, I, don't, I don't think we can really get, get those easily to, due to the way how to install this run but we want to clean house a bit, definitely. But yeah, not, not really any, any, any announcements just yet. Okay, thank you. Any, any more questions? So I think that's, that's it, so thanks for attending. Hopefully it was, it was useful for you and looking forward to seeing you on the test day in fall. Thanks a lot.